It is 10 a.m., Madam Chair, if we want to go whenever you are ready here. Sure, you know. Um, all right, it is, I'd like to call the order um, the Tax Increment District Joint um, Review Board for September 15, 2022. Um, we should, um, I want to welcome some of our new members. We have Daniel and Joshua that are new to our board, so thank you. Um, we will take a roll call. Um, Bradley Klingsborn. Can I interrupt one second? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. The recording start, Dave. Okay. Let us know when you're ready. Oh, okay, perfect. Dave, did you start recording? It is recording. Dave Buck. Yes, oh, I'm muted. Yes, we are recording. Okay, there we go. All right, I think let's start over. Um, call to order. <laughs> The Tax Increment District Joint uh, Review Board for Thursday, September 15, 2022. We'll take roll call. We have Brad, um, Bradley Klingsborn. He's here. He, yep, yep. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to Joshua Patchek. Here. All right. Um, we have Daniel Minchak. Here. Um, Brent Weicker. Here. And Diana Ellenbecker. Here. Uh, we will go on to the approval of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion. Who to approve the agenda? Second. Okay, we had a motion by Joshua, second by Brent. Is that Brent, thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's, that passes. Um, we will take a, a approval of the minutes, a motion to approve the minutes from June 23rd, 2022 meeting. So moved. Second. All right, we had a motion by Joshua, a second by Brent. All in favor? Aye. Say aye. aye. That passes. We will move on to regular business. Number one, consideration with possible action to adopt an allocation amendment resolution and to amend the project plan for TID for downtown to TID 22. All right, I will take that one, Diana, thank you. Um, again, uh, obviously each one of these information, the, the amendment packets for the, each project plan has been included in your packet, um, as well as the uh, any the important resolutions for each one of these. So we will simply kind of provide a, a, a kind of a high level overview of each one as we go through these. Um, just to make sure and then see if just we'll try to make sure and answer any questions anybody may have uh, Try to make use best use of everybody's time this morning. So <clears throat> um, I guess uh, item e1 is kind of related also to uh, I guess item e3 are both our, our, our Allocation amendments to our shipyard TID district um, Essentially, so this is the proposed amount we're looking at is a is million dollars from TID 4 to TID we're dealing with approximately a $20 million improvement project uh, from the city standpoint. Uh, phase one is underway. If folks have driven by the site, there are construction equipment out on there. Uh, doing all of our, part of our waterfront amenities out there right now. Um, essentially, that includes uh, Riverfront Trail, uh, Boat, Marina, Kayak Launch, uh, and some of the other kind of public amenities directly immediately on the waterfront for the shipyard. So phase one is underway. This should be hopefully done by middle of next year. Phase two is kind of more of our great, the great lawn area and the kind of the park space and, and essentially kind of tied in behind the public improvements we're dealing with right now. So that's scheduled to be kind of under design this winter and hopefully uh, under construction maybe begin the next fall. Um, just a quick update that we weren't, didn't even have available really even at the first joint review board meeting. So we have secured almost $6 million in supporting grants from EPA, Department of Interior, and the National Park Service for both phase one and phase two improvements. Um, why we're kind of looking to do the fund transfer at this point, certainly we need the availability for those. Those, aren't, uh, those are match funds required for most of those grant programs. Um, so obviously, we have had delayed increment from uh, the merge project, but the good news is uh, we just received an email this week that they have uh, kind of has dealt with the unanticipated uh, environmental aspect that they ran into as they were preparing to move forward here this summer. Um, essentially, they had some incorrect soils data, so that caused them to delay of about six months to kind of get through and rework their schedule. But it appears they are ready to move forward, so we're excited to have them uh, back in action. Obviously, that's our key initial increment for the project, so we're excited to have them go. But it is costing us a year of increment, essentially, on that project. Uh, in addition, Impact 7 is actually on the Badger Sheet Metal site, which is actually across the road. 
from from this site, but as part of this TIP district, they are we have a fleet development agreement pending with them uh, here. Hopefully, in this this is in TID twenty two. Then hopefully here coming up within the next several months. So obviously you know, you'll hear a you're probably going to hear a, a broken record a little bit. Uh, probably if you guys have been sitting in on other meetings, you're probably hearing the same uh, same reasonings for some of these things. And obviously the increased project costs we're all seeing across the board, not only for the private improvements, but also for the public sector improvements, uh, primarily with construction, uh, materials costs, uh, financing costs, interest rates climbing. Um, so certainly causing us uh, a little bit of stress on, on doing those things. So uh, those are our primary justifications for requesting the transfer. Um, with that, is, are there any questions that I can answer regarding uh, this particular item or this district? Seeing none, nobody having any questions. Uh, obviously, the staff recommendation would be to would be to uh, approve the resolution uh, authorizing the allocation amendment. If there's no questions, I would entertain a motion. I'll uh, motion to approve. Second. Second. All right, we had a motion by Bradley. Second by. I missed that. Brent or Brad. Okay. Um, any other discussion? All in favor say, um, always say yay. 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 Op opposed? That passes. Okay. On to regular business item number two, consideration with possible action to amend the project plan for TID 10 Main Street and East Mason Street to add eligible projects. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Again, so what I'll also make a note on here is that obviously at the, uh, there were no public comments received at the public hearing on any of these items. Uh, so if I fail, I should have said that for the first one as well, in case anyone was asking. Uh, we did not receive any questions or comments during the public hearing period on this. But this one in particular was we thought we might get some questions and comments on it. The TID 10 uh, Main and Mason, and Mason Street is uh, really kind of the East Town Mall area. Folks, there's a, is a significant flooding area for the city. Uh, has a significant um, intersections during significant rainfall events has considerable issues in this area. A lot of investment has already been made in this area, but there's certainly additional work that can be done. Um, so our public working with our public works department, they are you know, proposing um, an additional four million dollars in a variety of improvements, focusing primarily on flood control uh, and then pedestrian and intersection improvements, really around the East Town Mall area. Folks have ever driven through there, that's a pretty wide stretch right in front of East Town Mall. There are no real pedestrian accommodations there. I believe Department of Public Works said that's our oldest traffic signal in the city, or one of our oldest. Uh, it is really not designed to add any pedestrian enhancements to that particular area. So they would like to kind of invol involve not only certainly painting, but improvements to the median and the actual traffic signals for that particular area to try to improve uh, traffic flow in general, but especially for pedestrian access to the neighborhoods uh, to the north. Um, and then there's some, some minor, minor improvements related to stormwater management, uh, public utility improvements, and other streetscaping in the area. We have had uh, considerable success regarding improvements to the East Town Mall area. Um, folks have kind of gone by and seen the amount of uh, facade improvement underway on the existing building, uh, as well as some of the, we're calling them in-lot developments, kind of on the interior ring road of those large parking lots are kind of getting being treated as outlots that are adding increments. Um, and the internal ones are adding increments. The ones immediately right on Mason Street, however, are not in included actually coming onto the tax roll immediately. So I think the intention was when this was created was to leave that row of, of retail on, on the tax roll for, to allow for some tax base to be developed for all of the jurisdictions. And it seems to be working actually fairly well at this point. Um, so with those, you know, with the increment that is being generated in this for the, the ability to add, allocate those $4 million to those specific types of improvements. And with that, we'll be happy to answer any questions anyone has. Is that a mandatory termination year on this, Tid? There is. Oh, I think let me fire up the, he has it in the, Day for 10 is August of 2031. There we go. And I saw that the project plan had the four million spread out evenly over 10 years. Is that actually, is that just an estimate 
is it going to be like a, a big year and we just don't know which one it's, um, is it actually 400,000 fairly evenly over the next 10 years? I think it's, it's a matter of how other, if kind of some other projects happen to come into that area, there's obviously some other funding sources at play that might be able to use that could excel if a grant or, or other funding comes in, it could accelerate a project, right? That we're not sure exactly on. So I think at this point we're doing as, as an estimate, um, the intention was certainly obviously to not impact any borrowing unless we had to. Um, but if it's certainly there was a need and there was an opportunity, could be accelerated. I'd say the flood control ones and the pedestrian enhancements are more immediate types of projects that there could be borrowing involved in that could get done right away. Um, but I think in terms of uh, exactly like saying an exact year when they're going to happen, probably in the next year or two, but it's kind of subject to seeing exactly how our other capital improvements kind of lay out for the city at this point. So our internal staff public works is already kind of kind of maxed. Uh, so trying to accelerate these projects could cause some some internal logistics that might we have to hey, contract it out or consult it out to kind of maybe accelerate those projects. And, and I can just jump in also the you know ideal world is it yeah if we could have three or four hundred thousand dollar expenses every year it would be perfect that it would keep our fund balance. We're bringing in um, something over three hundred thousand dollars excess um, increment every year in those ten years. So. At this point, that is why we allocated the 400000 evenly. Um, but ideally, that I mean, I'm, projects don't typically work that way, but um, that is why it's right now it's being allocated that way. Well, and that's why I was asking was because if it's $4 million that you're going to spend next year all at once, then it's going to necessitate borrowing, which has interest costs and things like that. And is a different decision to be made, but if it's if it's projects that you can break up and make them smaller so at least it's not you know over a million dollars in any given year so you can maintain some fund balance and then you're just using cash that you already have yeah so this, that makes more sense i will i'll speak hurry to borrow if we don't unless we don't have to <laughs> so, <laughs> especially not right now yeah <laughs> exactly so. i have no other questions there aren't any other questions i would entertain a motion for item number two so moved. Second. All right, we have a motion by Bradley, second by Brent. All in favor? Aye. Um, that passes. We'll Aye. move on to item number three, the possible action to adopt an allocation amendment resolution to amend and to amend the project plan for TID 12, I-43 Industrial Park to TID 22. Okay. Um, Situation here is similar to the first item. I think you mentioned these two are kind of connected here. Um, one to essentially say, so looking about, this is a $2 million transfer that we were looking at previously. Uh, again, to, uh, to Brad's point on borrowing, obviously any funds we can transfer internally prevent us from having to use the borrowing. Uh, we already have some borrowing we already, have already incurred. Uh, and certainly want to control and minimize that and trying to get the, these projects implemented going forward. So, um, you know, TID 12 is doing, is, doing, is doing well. We have only a couple of lots left that could develop in that in TID 12 right now in I-43. Uh, a later item that was on the agenda on here is the Grandview Industrial Park is kind of the expansion build building onto this particular area as a different TID, so allowing this one hopefully to close. Um, but at this point, we, we do kind of do see the need to maybe use these funds available to try to get that transition to prevent additional borrowing uh, to the extent possible. Uh, in the shipyard area project as a blighted district. So, um, and similarly, are there any questions regarding this particular item? All right, if there aren't any questions, I'd entertain a motion. Uh, sorry, I had one quick one. Yep. And I just wanted to make sure I was looking at the right thing, but I pulled up the, the TID 12 um, project plan. Mm -hmm. And the cash flow in there, I'm just trying to understand it. Um, it looks like it's two pages, so it's a little tough to, to figure out, but um, it's showing that we have about 2 million in, um, in the TID 12 fund. Is that, sorry that I'm having trouble understanding this. But it's showing a five and a half million dollar allocation to TID 22. But here's a two million dollar approval. Was that changed or? Yeah, I think that was. Oh, go ahead, Jonathan. 
Oh yeah, I was just going to chime. In. I think that um, we we had gone through a couple different different iterations for how much uh, to allocate out, and it and it did change a few times. So I think two million is where it just landed. Okay, and yeah, it's showing that at the end of 2021 there was a um, balance of three, just over 3.8 million. Correct. So we do the two million now. We still have. A significant fund balance in TID 12. That's correct. Do you know, is there an updated cash flow for TID 12? If not, I, I'm happy to send one out to the group. And my question there is just, you know, there's obviously a lot of debt payments and I can't do all the math immediately in my head, but um, how close are we to closing out TID 12 if, if we can limit this to $2 million for the transfer? Can we um, can we early close the debt? I'm trying to remember the word defees. Can we defees the debt? The yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and I think uh, you know uh, I'll let Neil and Diana speak to it a little bit more. But I think the plan is that this would close out in the next one to two years. Um, I and yeah, certainly the, that with the two million dollar transfer, uh, there will be enough uh, fund balance to uh, call or repay all of that um, existing debt uh, early. Yeah, as of right now, one point eight million dollars of interest and in, um, principal and interest is still outstanding. Twenty one or twenty two through to the end, but one point eight. And even after this $2 million transfer, we, we have over that and fund balance for TIG 12. Is that right? Yes. Correct. So I think, and I think that was intentional. I think, I think we used the, I think the first projection of that was done here. We just did the, if we did, if we did a transfer of the entire availability of funds just to see if it was viable. But so I think, yeah, we, we, knowing that that was what we think we need to contribute to 22 and still have it available to cover cover the, the ability to get it closed down in the next year or two. I think that's absolutely would be our intention. Okay, so what? So next year sometime we would consider the, the termination? I think that we would probably look, I think we want to evaluate, I know there was some, at least some discussion at one point in terms of whether or not we were going to use the housing allocation from, from this TID to contribute to that house. I think that would be the one outstanding item we would need to decide if we were going to make that allocation. And I know Diana has actually done some research in terms of our ability to, to call that and then actually do that in the same year as we close. So I think if that ended up working out, well, that's something we very likely could be bringing forward next year. Okay. Any more discussion on number three, or I would take a motion. Just, just to clarify, so we're we're looking at roughly three point six, three point seven in fund balance projected after this year. Yes. Okay. Um, it's it's currently at the end of twenty twenty one. We were sitting at three point eight, three point nine million additional revenue coming in, less this two million dollar transfer less um, debt for 2022, we're projected then to still be um, around $4 million still at the end of 2022 with this $2 million transfer, which should be enough to cover additional future debt um, payments and in, um, interest. Perfect, thank you. And I will circulate uh, an updated cash flow that shows the $2 million uh, number uh, to everybody. I have a motion to approve. Second. All right. We have a motion by Bradley and second by um, Joshua. All in favor? Aye. 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 That passes. We're going to move on to number four. Consideration with possible action to adopt a resolution extending TID 14 North Broadway corridor for three years. All right. Thank you, Diana. This is one uh, that uh, did come forward uh, to this body previously, and I think the discussion at that point Brad, correct me if I'm wrong, and that was kind of the idea was to wait and see if this was really going to be necessary or not. Well, that was obviously before the pandemic and before everything else happened, and now we've got additional information that makes it pretty clear that that's going to be necessary. Um, so certainly we've taken a look at the uh, at, at doing this, because obviously this is something we could have transferred, just transferred funds into, 
um, and so forth it, as, as an option because we were already doing that really to the shipyard we felt that the extension might be the better way to go uh, we do have additional infrastructure costs that are still remaining to finish the area obviously the delayed increment doing the pan to the project being delayed uh, has certainly caused uh, an impact on the cash flow up to about we figure estimate about a half million dollars a year in terms of not having the, the current project, the fort at the rail yard and project in the ground, uh, where we have the elevator shafts up, if folks know what we're talking about down on Broadway. Um, that project has since has received a kind of its, its go on getting financing reset. Uh, that financing is based on an assumption of getting these additional three years to do that. The developer has provided us a cash flow analysis that shows without those three years that they were in a negative cash flow balance like their last five years of the project without being able to refinance using those additional three years. Um, we've had a couple of other things going on. Certainly there's, there's been a little bit slower valuation growth on the existing buildings and the, and the redevelopment of those existing structures than we originally anticipated. Um, just haven't quite penciled out uh, to the values we were hoping for on some of those. Um, talking about the usual suspects and increased project costs, certainly we can talk about that. Uh, change in the anticipated valuation of the projects, uh, going from a market rate apartment project to a more of an affordable unit project has definitely affected the overall projection on the value of the, of the property. Uh, in both cases, the development agreement, we have both the new and the old, the guarantee is still at a $21 million guarantee for that project. However, the, I think in the original one, when it was a market rate project, the assumption was that that was actually likely to come in considerably higher and then generating a, a substantial amount more of increment that could be divided up and actually used to cover costs at a much quicker rate than was being projected. So from an overall TIF standpoint, it still works the same from the city standpoint, but for, for the individual project itself, but not for so much in terms of covering the rest of the things outside of the project that we we're hoping to use uh, those TIF funds for. So um, so there's a lot going on. We, they are prepared to get out there and get going again. Um, I, so we're, we're excited to finally get that one get back going. We, we really need the increment in the ground to get them going. Uh, and this is kind of the last piece in order to kind of get that project back on track and get them in, internally identified. So, um, you know, we have we have again we have taken a look at that 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 cash flow analysis, kind of an A versus B option A, um, and it, it is a pretty clear deficit in terms of the existing financing package under the original terms of their deal versus what they are hopefully going to be able to pull off with the additional three years uh, if approved here. So, um, with that, certainly able to answer any questions. Do you have a, a cash flow on this one? I know that it was in the update, but I wasn't sure if there was something that. Yeah, I, I have a, a, a not on, on uh, I guess not on TIT 14. I don't know if I had, I think we had this one specifically. We need to, Jonathan, I don't think we did one on 14, did we? We did not. No, nope. we did not. Um, so we can kind of identify, I mean, that's something we should provide. We can, I know we've run numbers internally. But I think we should, but we could definitely get that out, out to everybody. I have a private developer from the, really, we looked at the cash flow from the individual project and the TIF, most of our efforts on that one in particular. Um, we, we probably do need to update the one specifically for, for this one. I don't know if, Diane, if you have an existing, kind of the, the last one we did, that was, is that a, something that we have available that we could pull up on the screen? It's the last one we looked at. Um, certainly, if you give, give me an overview, I think it'd be tough to see on the screen, but it's certainly, mm -hmm. um, at the end of 2021, TIP 14 was in a negative fund balance at about $2.8 million. Um, obviously, the delayed in increment is, um, with previous borrowing and um, grant payouts, has um, brought this one into a negative fund balance. Um, so that is why, um, in this case, um, the extension will back end any additional funding for this project. We'll actually put it on the last three years of um, its um, useful, uh, its its life. So it'll go actually the extra payments will come out in 34, 35, and 36. And so helping out the, in the long run, helping out the developer, but it's really going to be on the back end when this, um, it is expected to turn positive. Do we have any additional borrowing that we're going to be doing for this, TID? We have like, not. At this point, we have not. The last time we borrowed, we borrowed $3 million for TID 14 in 2020. We have not um, moved forward and requested any additional funding. Um, again, there, uh, you know, we were with the anticipation of some 
some investment coming in for some of these projects that are now getting restarted. Um, we know that that won't really technically come in, most of it, until 2024. And for there, are, there, there are some infrastructure projects, probably, that, that still need to be addressed and probably taken a look at. Um, but we're obviously, we're ho hopefully going to be able to manage those with just from an increment level. But, I mean, nothing major, but just kind of more wrapping up some of the initial, kind of the final streetscaping, sidewalks. Because So the major infrastructure has been installed here, but there might be some smaller public infrastructure that we may need to still do some small borrowing for. Um, but again, that's we're kind of waiting to see. We're not really, we've been hesitant to do that until we know there's a project back in the ground and then we're coming in, so. Are we trending in the right direction on this one? Are we, is our increment greater than our uh, expenses year to year? I think we're, I don't know, Diane, if, it, what do you, if you have a quick overview on that one. By the time I anticipate, you know, we're making some assumptions on the new increment. By 2024, we would have more um, revenue coming in than we would have expenses. Um, the next two years, 2022 and 23, not yet, um, but by 24, anticipated more revenues. And then um, again, that would be, um, it would turn, right now we're looking at it's turning positive fund balance. It's still gonna take until the, you know, 28, 29 before we have a positive fund balance on this one with the assum assumed additional increment. That's without any additional borrowing. Okay, the city's just floating the cash balance then on this one? Yes. Okay. There are a couple, of, there are, one other thing I guess would add to it, right? There are a couple of still development sites, blank development sites that are out in this, in this TID that we're strongly encouraging the developer to accelerate <laughs> some development on uh, to try to get some new building and add some additional increments. So that is that is the upside that there is still some opportunity to generate some additional increment on those vacant sites, so. All right, I'll make a motion to approve the three-year extension. Second. All right, we have a motion by Bradley, second by Joshua. Any other discussion? Um, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That passes. I just want to stay in on that meal too. Just yep. Oh, yep. yep. I assume Thank you, Brent. Yep. Yep. Thank you. All right. And then we'll move on to number five. Consideration with possible action to adopt a create um, to adopt a creation resolution to a C4. Cherry Street and adopt the project plan. There we go. Um, ending on a couple, hopefully, a couple good positive notes here. We're excited about, about these two projects coming on and, and prepping up here. Um, this TIT 24 is uh, Cherry Street. This is for uh, primarily for an anchor project at 222 Cherry Street. Uh, this is, it's the, if folks are familiar with where Bosses is in downtown Green Bay, the magazine store, uh, looking to actually um, add a, a six story building actually on that site. The original intent was to build on top of the foundation of the original store. However, there's been some engineering concerns of whether or not that might be the most viable option. So we're probably looking at actually more of a knockdown and rebuild at this point on that site. Um, looking at about an $8 million anchor project down there. We've been very intentional on this one, uh, making it number one, a mixed use TID. So it's as a 20 year life, not as opposed to a blight mediation that could be longer on this one, we feel that this could the, this could, the return on this one could be faster. Uh, by keeping it in, in within the 20 years, we think there was no no concern on, on needing the additional years for a longer tip based on a different type of district in this case. Uh, we have made, been very intentional in trying to keep the number of parcels smaller in this particular case to try to avoid any possible fluctuation in, in values in terms of the economy going or it's going the next couple of years. So just to kind of mitigate the impacts, potential impacts of any, any losses in value in this particular area. We think we've been pretty conservative uh, and obviously can always expand if another project comes into the area. Um, the other key site that's included in this tip district besides that particular structure at 222 Cherry Street is the city's uh, lot that's owned on Adams Street, the parking lot that's there. We'd like to see that eventually be redeveloped into something larger. We have had gone out for RFP and a couple of uh, unsuccessfully a couple times on that lot. Uh, the other could be some new redevelopment on is also the old former Bay Lake Center, the former uh, mall downtown, and possibly a building on that site. Those two sites, or that building is not currently included in the TIT, uh, and would be expanding to that if and when a project came forward on that particular uh, location. Um, so at this point, the uh, the incentives, need, not much public infrastructure will be required in this area. May improvements related to the ramp. 
Um, but mostly the actually the project, the private project that's proposed at 222 Cherry Street has promised to make uh, any required improvements in terms of connecting their pro physically connecting their project to their to their new building. So they would actually like a, a skywalk ramp for a pedestrian access from the ramp into their building. So, but the developer is paying for that on their own. Um, so we're excited about the prospects of that. I think that development agreement is is actually going forward for approval um, actually at council next week. Uh, so, and obviously it requires assistance to the creation of this particular district. So uh, with that, happy to answer any questions on that. No questions, I'd entertain a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Okay. All right, and a motion by Joshua, second by Brent. All in, any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And that passes. Moving on to number six. Consideration with possible action to adopt a creation resolution to establish TID number 25 Grandview Industrial Park and adopt the project plan. Thank you. Uh, again, similarly, if folks have been following anything uh, on this particular project, uh, this one is related to the expansion area out on East Mason Street, uh, essentially out in the intersection of Mason and Grandview. Uh, we actually have a uh, about a 30 acre uh, industrial project that is getting ready to get started and actually doing site work uh, as soon as the council approved their, the uh, resolution on this one uh, the other day. Uh, this is, would be a brand new industrial TID, uh, currently limited to just the city owned parcels primarily in this area. I think maybe, maybe one or two parcels outside of that. Um, focusing on that with certainly the ability to expand that in the future should we get additional industrial interest, which we are actually getting some calls already. Um, particularly from uh, Carnivore Meat Company is actually the anchor tenant. If folks have read about that one in the news, in terms of building a 220,000 square foot, about $35 million anchor uh, production facility, going to be primarily freeze drying uh, of pet food products is kind of their main 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 uh, operations out there. Um, so there will be eventually this one, unlike the downtown one, will need additional public infrastructure to be expanded as the park expands. Um, we've uh, the, the, very fortunate that this anchor tenant and the tip. Uh, deal we've got with them will, should very clearly uh, fund the uh, the infrastructure needed to expand the park. So uh, they're actually, I think the specifics on, I think they're taking 20% of the increment for the developer and then the city is retaining the rest of the money on a $35 million project to help fund uh, infrastructure development, other land acquisition or other costs as we, we need to to expand the park. So uh, we're very fortunate that's a great, not only is it a great company, we think it's a really uh, really a very viable project that's going to help us really grow the industrial park very, very quickly if we have the opportunity to do so. So with that, happy to answer any questions. Looks like most of these parcels are in TID 12 right now. <coughs> One of them. Um, is there a reason we're not amending TID 12 to get those out of TID 12 and create this? Uh, just because we figured we were going to be closing 12 again, Brett, I guess within the next couple of years. So it was not going to be, we just thought that this was the most, the fastest way forward on these. Yeah. It, I mean, there doesn't seem to be a, a ton of into 12 from these parcels, but I just wasn't sure if it was cleaner to do that rather than have overlapping tids. Yeah, I guess if Jonathan, I don't know if you have any opinion on that. Um, I think from our standpoint, it was just this was because of the speed we were moving forward with this particular prospect. We felt this was just the fastest way to get this one moving. Yeah, and since um, TID 12 is closing out relatively shortly, um, this overlay won't uh, be around for very long. But um, the overlay is, you know, is relatively straightforward in that it, you know, it pauses any new value creation on the, the parcels in TID 12 and uh, any of that new value just comes into this new TID. So, um, you know, again, it's, it's only for a year or two, but um, that's kind of the, I guess, the thinking there. All right, it's not too complicated for you. So why we hire Ellers, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what I'm saying is maybe you don't need to pay this guy if you don't have overlapping tits. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, they do too good of work. Brad, there was, I, th I think he's already, we're already hooked, I'm afraid. No, no so. offense, 
<laughs> trying to ask questions to get you out of a job, but no offense. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'll motion to approve the creation of TIT 25. Second. All right, we have a motion by Bradley, a second by Joshua. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 That passes. Uh, moving on to informational, at this point, um, I don't. we do not have another meeting um, set. Um, yep. I think just in terms of just to let folks know, we are, you guys remember when we first met, there was a, a third creation that was originally on the list. If you guys notice, that's not on the list right now. Uh, that was for the uh, actually the, the um, 200 North Monroe project here downtown that has experienced some delays due to environmental work and other things. And they just simply weren't going to be ready to go this year. So we're kind of putting off creation of that TIF until we know there's a path forward on that one. Uh, most likely, they will be reconvening to do some sort of creation, possibly uh, maybe later this year, but more likely probably after the first of the year. So just in case everyone's wondering where that one mysteriously disappeared to, uh, they weren't ready to go. So we weren't going to lose a year of increment until we knew we had a project ready to go forward. So, question I had was, when would we need to approve any termination for TIT-12 that would be effective next year? I think we probably would be ready sometime in the spring. We'd have something ready to go. I think we just need to do it in terms of order of uh, how, what timing would we need to do it. I think we'd be able to look at something in the spring, I would think. Yeah, it just would need to be passed prior to April 14th uh, or 15th uh, yep. uh, of okay. next year. So earlier, earlier in the spring to be closed next year. Okay. Correct. Do we need a two meeting thing like we did this time or is it just a one off? Okay. Probably be this, is it for, to, do, to close one out? Jonathan, is that is that, is that a one meeting? A it's actually not even a JRB action. Okay. It's, not, it's a council action. Okay. Cool. Well, certainly we'll keep this board obviously up for praised if that moves forward and let you guys know about that for sure. So. And it would be a JRB if you decide to do the affordable housing extension, right? Correct. So if you want to do that, we would need to meet before April 15th. Yep. Have the. Yep affordable housing extension for one year with the termination action. Okay. Yeah. And I think similar to what we did last year, we could actually do both of those. I think as long as you just do the affordable housing extension, you can do the termination vote then right afterwards, can't we? I think we can actually do those simultaneously, essentially. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can do them in the same meeting. We just have to make sure that the dates on the resolutions also are one precedes the other. They're not on the same date. Yeah. If there any other questions, I would take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you again to our new members. Thank you, everybody.